Today we'll get a Bluffton Bobcat update and our Bluffton Fire Department has some timely holiday safety tips. Welcome to the Bluffton News. I'm Annalisa Itkor and we have a lot to cover, business, entertainment, and of course the latest local news. But first, let's start with Bluffton's current headlines. Bluffton kicked off the holiday season Saturday morning with its 41st annual Christmas parade. Some were on floats, some in cars, some on horseback or on motorcycles, and some on foot. But all shared the Christmas spirit with the throngs of people that lined the streets leading from Town Hall to Oscar Fraser Park. Local businesses, churches, volunteer organizations, and social clubs festooned all manner of transportation with glitter, greenery, and lights, and delighted onlooking children by tossing handfuls of candy to be stuffed into waiting bags that would rival a Halloween haul. What with the parade along with special tree lighting ceremonies in Old Town and Buckwalter Place, it was definitely a weekend that had Bluftonians joining in the spirit of the season. The discovery of an unauthorized bank account at H.E. McCracken Middle School has prompted a police investigation to find answers, including whether Principal Philip Shaw, who has been on paid leave for undisclosed reasons since November 8th, is connected. The Beaufort County School District unearthed the account in a review of school operations and turned the matter over to the Bluffton Police Department late last week to bring to light details about who set it up and how it's being used. Spokesman Jim Foster, who could not provide details about deposits or expenditures, said that the discovery of the account was not connected to Shaw's take of leave, take, taking of leave. Shaw continues to collect his $93,744 salary, while Assistant Principal Joseph Warfield leads the school. At this point, it's uncertain whether the account is a criminal offense or just a violation of policy. Information on the personal matter that prompted the initial review, as well as new details about the unauthorized account, will be released if, according to Fox, we get to a point where the public's need to know outweighs privacy. And this just in, Christmas is going to the dogs. Palmetto Animal League is presenting Santa Paws December 8th from 1 until 4 at Palmetto Animal League's Adoption Center located in the Riverwalk Business Park near Bluffton, where you can get a keepsake photo of Santa and your four-legged friend. You can purchase copies of the photos and 100% of the proceeds will go to help Palmetto Animal League. The photos will be available in plenty of time to be tucked into Christmas cards or put on the mantle with care. If you you would rather have pictures taken of Santa and your two-legged children, well, that is welcome as well. And then there were three. With two homes in Bluffton's Wharf Street redevelopment sold and another closing apparently scheduled for next month, just three unsold homes remain in the $1.2 million affordable housing project, which was mostly paid for with federal stimulus money. The proceeds from the sales will fund future town housing projects. However, not everyone is jumping for joy. There are those who have opposed the project from the beginning, criticizing it for being ill-conceived and claiming that private business could have done the whole deal deal for less money and in less time. Despite the program's challenges, Bluffton senior planner Danny Wilson and other town officials believe the project has been a success. And here's what's happening around the state. Jerry Hux of Rock Hill was one of three South Carolina education lottery players to successfully match the first five numbers drawn Wednesday night. He stopped at the MR Express on his way into work and had to stand in line to get a ticket. Well, he's glad he was patient and waited for his quick pick to print. Had he matched one more number, the Red Powerball, a share of the record-setting $587.5 million jackpot, would have been his. But he's hardly disappointed. He's paying off his house and will be back at work tomorrow. Hux is a truck builder for Daimler Trucks in Cleveland, North Carolina. Had the winner paid the extra dollar for power play, his $1 million prize would have been $2 million. MR Express and Rock Hill received a commission of $10,000 for selling the claim ticket. A Liberty man has been sentenced to nearly 30 years in prison after a jury found him guilty of molesting three young children. 
Prosecutors say 28-year-old Damon Brown was sentenced last week. Solicitor Walt Wilkins says Brown molested an 8-year-old boy, a 10-year-old boy, and a 10-year-old girl between 2003 and 2006. Wilkins says one of the children reported the crimes to a school resource officer in 2009, leading to the discovery of the other victims. Brown was convicted on one count of first-degree criminal sexual content, conduct, three counts of first-degree sexual exploitation of a minor, and three counts of lewd act on a minor. He was sentenced to 359 months in prison. For more information on these headlines and more, please check out the media sources you see listed on your screen. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Coming up, B.J. Frazier of the Bluffton Sun brings us the buzz in Bluffton as the Bluffton News brings you hot off the presses. The smoked chipotle burrito is really good. Yeah, my zesty cheesesteak burrito is great. Are you familiar, Pete, with the phrase, don't mess with success? Yeah. Because this is not only messing with success, this is taking success to the cliff and shoving success over. Success said, oh, please, I'll do anything, leave me alone. These burritos didn't even hear that. They heard, oh, put, and that was it. It was just like, wah. <laughs> Egg everywhere. Wake up to sirloin steak and fluffy eggs with the new zesty cheesesteak and smoked chipotle breakfast burritos. This is how you sonic. Welcome back to the Bluffton News. Joining me now is B.J. Frazier from the Bluffton Sun with all the juicy details on hot off the presses for Bluffton. B.J., road closures all over the place in Bluffton. What's going on? You know, I, I, the, the one that really uh, stands out is that, as you know, they recently opened the Bluffton, not so we several months ago, opened the Bluffton Parkway down to Malpas Road. And we're across Burnt Church. It was one of these things where the state and the, and the uh, uh, county didn't get together, and there was a huge dip. You'd be going along at 50 miles an hour, and all of a sudden your car would go down and come up and bottom out, and of course they both pointed fingers at each other, and then they got together, and this is the week they're gonna repair it, finally. Now I understand that it costs something like $50,000 to repair this dip? Yeah, and I don't, know, I don't know where that money's coming from, probably the taxpayers, but at any rate, um, it, the road is gonna be closed Wednesday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., so watch for detour signs. But once it's done, it will be much smoother sailing. Good, well, that's a good thing. Now, speaking of smooth sailing, the flyover. It seems to be in the news all the time now. What's the latest? Well, you know, as you know, it's hotly contested, and this just gives more uh, uh, fodder to those that uh, oppose the whole project. And they're moving ahead, but the costs have, have risen by about 10% from $31 million to $34 million. And it, so it could, it could go up as high as 3 to $6 million more than they budgeted for. And they've got to figure out where they're going to get the money. And it may come from the A-tax grants, the accommodation tax grants that is supposed to go for tourism. Or it could come from outside funding from grants and so forth. Or poor Hilton Head Island may have to pay for the beautification portion of it, which could be up to a million dollars. And I also hear that they're looking to wipe out any of the beautification factors of the flyover, which I know is a really big deal to the residents getting behind the project. Yeah, it is. I mean, instead of coming up like you're on the Bronx River Parkway in New York, they want it to be like the Cross Island Parkway. And, and hopefully they'll figure out a way to do that because I think if they don't, it's not going to look very pretty. Well, and I know they've gotten one, I guess you would say, relatively low bid from a Kentucky-based company. And there are hopes, right, that they might be able to negotiate that down even lower? Well, they're going to try that, yes, but you know how that goes. Uh, uh, it may not be as successful as they hope. So, um, all right, well, let's move away from roads and problems like that and get into something that's a little bit more holiday spirit oriented. Bluffton Self Help, what's going on there? Well, it's their 25th anniversary, which is a real milestone. A quarter of a century, they have been helping people in need with food and clothing and so forth. They just came through a very busy Thanksgiving, which depleted many of their resources. And so, what we need to do in the Low Country is get behind them, donate good used clothing and food and food foodstuffs and toys. They're located right here in Sheridan Park. They, they just stop by at any time. They're open 9 to 5, Monday through Friday, and uh, they'd welcome anything you can donate. Great. And I know they have a website as well, so be sure to check that out. BJ, thank you so much. We always appreciate the information that you bring us. Thank you, Annalisa. Shelly Hodges is with us with a special Bluffton business report. 
Hi, we're out here at Riverwalk today out in Okity at the Palmetto Animal League. And with me is Tom Curry, owner of Low Country Pavers. Tom, tell us a little bit about your invol involvement with Palmetto Animal League and your relationship with these folks. Well, I'm actually on the board of directors for Palmetto Animal League. Uh, I'm the chairman of the fundraising committee. Uh, we got involved with Palmetto Animal League when my family, uh, my wife and my children and myself used to come out here and just play with animals. The animals here, they live for people's attention. They want to be loved by people. And they're sad if they're not being loved. And uh, we just came out and would play with them all the time. And the more involved we got with Palmetto Animal League, the more incredible we saw what a wonderful foundation this is. Um, and uh, we wanted to get involved. Tell us about some of the events that you've had for Palmetto Animal League to raise money for them. We have a lot of events. We have the beer fests that are always very popular. Uh, we have the sunset parties, which we started this year, which have been a phenomenal success. Uh, they've been packed. Um, and as a business owner, I spend a little bit of money to sponsor these events, and I get so much exposure here locally, it's, it's ridiculous for anybody to not help out. Anybody who has a business that wants exposure should be looking to uh, sponsor these type of events. Uh, it's not only is it charity, but the Sunset Party was packed, and Low Country Paver was plastered all over the place. You know, I, I, I kind of enjoy it and having it myself, but the thing is I don't want to be... Um, uh, selfish and have Low Country Paver get it all because Palmetto Animal League, uh, League needs the donation and needs the help. So I don't mind sharing a secret with other businesses. Uh, we'd like to get a whole lot more businesses involved in these events and get you involved locally. You should be involved locally. You know, if you're a local business, you want people locally to come buy your products and services, you should get involved. Now, Tom, this is a great place not uh, for people to just come by and take a look at the animals and the dogs and the cats. Tell us a little bit about um, the facility here. The facility is like no other shelter you've ever seen. You, you just took a tour of it. This is a wonderful place to come and just play with the animals. If you're having a bad day, come here at lunchtime, walk a dog, play with the cats, put a smile on your face. And this is a happy place to be. This is not a uh, shelter that makes you feel sad when you leave. This is a happy place. Well, it's a beautiful facility, and now you're always looking for volunteers. So what, what, what do people need to do if they want to volunteer here? Just come on in, fill out an application, uh, play with some animals, just have some fun. Now, you also have a thrift store here that people can go to, and that helps benefit the shelter as well. All the money raised from the thrift store helps support Palmetto Animal League and saving animals' lives. So if you have furniture you need to donate, please bring it to Palmetto Animal League. Clothes, furniture, uh, hard goods from your house. Toys, pre please bring them to the thrift store, which is located in Sheridan Park, uh, and uh, help us save animals. Well, that's great. Thank you, Tom. And what a wonderful time to contribute to a great cause in this happy holiday season. And back to you. Thank you so much, Shelly. When we return, all the latest on the Bluffton Bobcats and some important Christmas fire safety tips. Tara's Men's Den, located beside Tara's Salon at the Moss Creek Village, is a full-service salon for men only. Open Monday through Saturday from 9.30 a.m. to 7 p.m., we offer haircuts, color, highlights, waxing, and treatments for hair loss. No appointment necessary, so come enjoy a relaxing atmosphere for men only, and don't forget senior discounts every Wednesday. Call or visit us today. Our number is 843-837-5555. Welcome back to the Bluffton News. Joining me now is Dave Adams, who is the athletic director of Bluffton High School. Go Bobcats. So to start off with Dave, why don't you give us a little bit of a wrap up of how the fall season has gone? Great fall season. We finished the season. We have nine varsity teams, about 336 athletes this year. and We finished with five region championships this year. And that was the uh, boys swim, girls swim, volleyball, golf, and boys cross country. The uh, Cross Country Boys team finished with Lower State Champion. Also, we had four teams that finished in the top ten in the state when it was all said and done. The Girls Golf Team, Boys Swim, Girls Swim, and the football program all finished in the top ten this year. That is really impressive. Just to give our viewers an idea of how impressive that is, do you have an idea of approximately how many students are at Bluffton High School? 
We have about 1,500 students at Bluffton High School, and we moved this year to the 4A division, which means we are right at the bottom as far as attendance. A lot of schools we compete against have about 3,000 students. Wow, so you've got some real talent there. Now, speaking of talent, your football season was fantastic. Three in a row now. In the last three years, we've had a record of 38 and 5. So uh, that is a great record. They finished in the final four this year in the 4A competition. So we were one game away from going back to that state championship game. So uh, again, that move, especially in the football program, when you go to 4A, we're a little worried about that, but they had a fantastic year. Now, I know that that last game was a little bit of a heartbreaker, but uh, we were all rooting for you. Yeah, and they ended up winning, or I'm sorry, they lost in overtime to Greenwood this past uh, Saturday. That was um, um, Northwestern High School out of Rock Hill. But, you know, we finished region runner-up. We won the Bridge Bowl trophy again this year, finished 12-2 uh, and two overall in the season. That's terrific. Now, looking forward, what's, what do you have in store for the winter season? Well, I, I know I'm repetitive again, but even now with the winter, they get that move up to 4A. And last year, we were fortunate enough that we had, a, we had a sweep of our region championships. The girls' basketball team were region champions. The boys' basketball team won the region championship for the first time ever in our school history. And then the wrestling team were region champions last year. So all three of those teams are competing again. Uh, new region, new look, bigger schools, and they'll get started tomorrow night as far as the basketball. All right. Well, it looks like we've got a lot of fun to look forward to. It sounds like that the athletics department at Bluffton High is doing fantastic. And thanks so much for being here, Dave. Thank you very much. Enjoyed it. I'm very pleased to welcome now Captain Randy Hunter from the Bluffton Township Fire Department. Now, Randy, I was looking at some statistics with the coming holiday season that over the year there is an average of 250 homes that are caused by Christmas trees catching on fire and about another 170 homes, and this is nationally, that catch on fire because of Christmas lights. And I understand you've got some really good holiday tips for us on how to keep our Christmas season safe. Uh, that is correct. And um, preventing these fires is a simple, um, you know, they're very basic ideas. We want to make sure the live Christmas tree, everyone loves live Christmas trees. Um, we want to make sure that we water those and keep them watered so that the moisture that they do have, we can maintain it. A dry Christmas tree is a very dangerous um, fire, possible fire hazard in our home. Um, now, is there a danger with silk trees as well with the lighting? Um, we don't need, there's not as much dangerous. Obviously, everything uh, nowadays is rated um, for flammability. It's a lot safer than they used to be um, several years ago. So there's, they're really safe. As long as we practice those, you know, we want to keep them away from open flames. Um, when it comes to electrical, uh, like the Christmas lights, either outside or inside, um, we want to make sure that we don't overload the outlets. Uh, make sure we use UL rated extension cords if we need to. Okay. Now, finally, let's take a look at fireplaces. I, we did a couple stories last year about chimney fires thanks to critters who had taken up residence in the chimneys. What advice do you have for fireplaces? Very simple, uh, some advice here is one, we want to make sure that after every year that we clean our chimneys and make sure that they're clean. Uh, you get a build up in there, it can uh, catch fire and then possibly spread outside the chimney. Another thing we want to watch out for too is when we clean our fireplaces, uh, we want to make sure that the ashes are cool uh, before we put them in any kind of trash. Uh, a lot of places, you know, people clean out their, their ashes from their fireplace, it goes into the trash and next thing you know, it, there's hot embers and we have a fire. And always make sure that we keep a clear distance, um, especially our, if we have Christmas trees or anything else, gifts, decorations, or keep them as far away from our fireplace as we can. Um, it's going to prevent any kind of fire starting or fire from starting uh, in those decorations. I've always been curious about going to bed at night. You know, you've had this beautiful fire at night and you try to damp it down as much as you can, but I've always felt worried about going to bed with logs still burning. What do you recommend in that situation? Well, personally myself, I always recommend not doing it. I don't do it in my home uh, just because you never know. Uh, but as long as it, you have a way, you know, we have screens over them, we have doors um, you can close up. Once everything is burnt down, um, you want to make sure that it doesn't roll out. If it burns overnight, uh, I'm not saying it's, you know, obviously whatever you feel comfortable with, uh, but the main thing you want to make sure that that doesn't come outside of the fireplace and possibly catch something on fire. So if it's smoldering and you have all the safety precautions, again, safety, the way it's designed to work, uh, everything should be uh, just fine. Great. Well, Randy, thank you so much for joining us and making sure that we have a much safer Christmas holiday. Well, thank you for having me.
Okay, so it's a romantic dinner for two. Now, I've already cut some tomato. Time for the vinaigrette. You are gonna love this. Okay, we need some sesame seeds. My favorite pan. Now, what's really important is with Merillat cabinets, you'll discover function that's irresistible. <clears throat> Good thing I'm not the jealous type. We now come to my favorite part of the news, the entertainment report. And of course, joining me is everybody's favorite reporter, Rodney Vaughn. Rodney, what is going on with Anything Goes? Very excited about this production that's coming into the Arts Center. We sure are. You know, we're so blessed to have the Arts Center here at Hilton Head Island. It's a great facility. They always put on first class productions. And the next show they're having is no exception to that. Anything Goes was a revival on Broadway in 2011, and they were the winner of three Tony Awards, including Best Musical Revival and Best Costumes. It's a great show. Now, it's a Cole Porter musical, so there are always going to be lots of songs that you recognize, including Anything Goes, and it's going to be running through the 30th of December at the Art Center. Great. Now, what are the cost of tickets, and how do we get tickets and all that good stuff? Well, tickets are $54 for adults, and you can visit their website at artshhi.com to get a little bit more information. Okay. I know they also have a very easy phone number to remember, 843-842-ARTS, I believe, and it is a wonderful show. You don't want to miss it. That's great right. Great characters, great songs. Couldn't recommend it more highly. Yes. All right, so going from the um, kind of crazy side of entertainment to the more holiday side of entertainment, what's going on at First Presbyterian Church? Well, lots of holiday things going on in the area, included at First Presbyterian Church on Hilton Head Island. They're going to be performing Handel's Messiah, and that's going to be Wednesday, December the 9th at 5 p.m. Now, you're going to be involved in that, I hear. Yes, I'm a little biased about this little blurb. Um, it's a great experience. I really encourage the community to come. It's kind of uh, a gift to the community because it's absolutely free. It is an enormous choir, Rodney. It, I mean, we're just kind of packed in there. It's really impressive and inspiring. And the soloists are first rate. They come in from all over South Carolina, and it's really spectacular. Wow, that's wonderful. And as you mentioned, it's a free event, so we welcome everyone to come out and join us for some and, traditional Hey, Christmas. you know, if you are a singer yourself, there is still a rehearsal on Saturday, so you can always come in, and you can get that information off of the First Presbyterian website and come and join us and sing. Great, and if you want something a little bit more traditional, we can join with the Christmas musical at the Savannah Theater in downtown Savannah. Oh, great. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, the production this year is called A Christmas Tradition, and that is a great facility as well. They're going to have the entire facility decked out in Christmas glitz and sing some traditional songs along with Santa Claus and a little humor and audience participation. And you can get more information about that on their website at savannatheater.com. Terrific. Rodney, thank you so much. You always make the weekend sound like it's going to be so much fun. Thanks, Annalisa. Our Bluffton News Pet of the Week is Faith. She was picked up by a human angel on a cold rainy day and brought to Brookshaven Animal Rescue. She's a lovable hound terrier mix who is looking for a forever home. If you're up for a lifetime of love and adoration, then you gotta have a little faith. For more information on faith and other adoptable pets, please call Brookshaven Animal Rescue at 843-757-7387. Joining me for the news program that is all Bluffton all the time, I'm Annalisa Itkor for the Bluffton News. We'll see you next time.